Hello and welcome to my experimental lecture for third year medical students. My name is Dr. Valentine, so let's start. And the topic that we need to talk today with you is about burns, basically introduction into combustiology, the knowledge about burns. So, if you don't mind, let's start. First of all, I, what I want to tell is what is burns themselves. The burns are superficial trauma to the skin uh, caused by the high temperature or the effect of the chemical elements or substances like uh, acids, alkalines, heavy metals, electricity as well, and cold as well the cold. Okay, the burn itself can be categorized in a six different categories by the mechanisms of the occurrence. Contact is the direct contact on the sur hot surface, that's pretty obvious. Scalding. Scalding is the exposure to the hot liquid steam or gas. This thing is usually causes, you see, superficial burns. Flesh. Flesh is a quick burn, usually to the full depth. Happens uh, like an explosion, for example. Flame, usually as well, damages to the body through the full depth of the skin. And chemical with electricity, with electric. We will talk about them a bit later. That's the classification by the categories. By the degrees, We can classify by the degrees in four different stages. Depending on which classification you will use, you will see that there is different names for them. Basically, that's the only difference that they have. Uh, first degree, second degree, third degree and fourth degree. By the European classification and first degree, second A, second B and third degree is by the classification that we're using right now in Ukraine and the classification is USA as far as I know. So let's talk about each degree a bit in details. First degree, that is the degree uh, associated with the superficial burn, trauma of the superficial layers of the skin, epidermal layer mostly. And in this case, as you can see, the affected area is red, painful, dry in this case, and the pain in this case is mild, not so severe, without blisters, and usually the healing for this stage takes approximately like one week, something like that. Okay, second A stage, or second stage in general. That is already deeper burn, affecting papillar layer of the derma, red skin as you can see and the appearance of the blisters the blisters contains the liquid that has a name exudate it's basically because it has a lot of proteins inside the tip of the blister the top of the blister the skin upon the blister is painless but everything around and inside is painful this skin it will be necrotized with future but we will not remove it because it's basically doing the effect of bandage. It's blocking the ways for the infection to get into the wound. So only if the blister is, has a huge size, then we will remove it. But if no, then no. Usually healing takes from one to like two or three weeks, something like that. Second stage or uh, third, second B stage, or third stage by another classification is this one. As you can see, the skin is also red, but it's more like pink red. And it's already deep burn, really deep burn. In this case, the skin is dry. It damaged the reticular layer of the skin. And uh, in this case, as it's strange, it doesn't look, it's painless. The area that is affected 
this area is painless. Only surrounding areas that has second A degree or first stage are painful. Why does that happen? Because the nerve ends that signalizing to our brain that there is pain, they are necrotized, they are burned off. There is nothing that can feel the pain in this area. That is the difference between this stage and this stage. As well, how to check. If you press on the redness in this stage, the redness will disappear and then appear again. In this case, if you will press and release fastly, it will signalize you that there is no changes in the color and that means that the capillars in the skin is necrotized already as well. It's a severe burn, it requires surgical attention, it will not heal by itself normally and it's healing with a scar and deformations, contractures. So it requires surgical attention for sure. And third degree now. The burn through all of the layers of the skin goes deep into the skin. That is the really serious, the most serious burn. If you can see carefully, let me step forward. As you can see, the skin itself around is burned off. And the yellow color over here is the subcutaneous tissue. Black lines that you see all around this area is basically necrotized vessels and thrombotic vessels. That is the differential sign and uh, how to understand the wound has through the layers, through the, all the layers of the skin or no, like between this one and that one and that one, second layer. As well at these pictures you can see we have burned bones completely. Keep in mind guys, burned bones does not heal, does not regenerate. So unfortunately in this case there's only amputation is possible. But in this case we can do a skin grafting and replace this part of the damaged skin with another part, with a donated from the donated area of the skin. That is basically four degrees for the burns. Another type of burns that I want to tell to you, as Edward's talk in Game of Thrones say, the winter is coming, uh, we have another type of burns that has a name called trauma or cold burn. They are basically having the same classification as the heat one, but it has its own features. First stage redness, dryness of the skin, peeling, a bit edema, and as you can see, the swelling gets sometimes pretty big. As well, you could experience that in your own skin if you walk outside for a long time in a cold environment and you had not direct contact, I mean by the wind, on your hand, and then you're coming into the warm climate, into your apartment or house, and when your skin get warm, you feel pain appearing. That is the cold burn of first stage. Treating pretty fast, the treatment, the first aid in this case is just moisture and ointments, and that's all. Second and third stages. It's a bit more serious. Second stage is the same as in heat burns, as I told before in there. Blisters. In the, but in this case, the blisters are, can appear not immediately after the contact, after the trauma. It can appear in like a couple hours even after the accident. So if you touch something cold outside, if you touch something cold outside, that can cause the appearance of this kind of blisters. As well, be careful and save the blisters in this case, they will heal if you keep the hand in war environment for a long time. Third stage is also the blisters, but in this case they are filled with liquorized blood. And this liquorized blood signalizing to us that almost the full layers of the skin is traumatized. And that is pretty serious actually because it can require surgical attention in future as well. What do I mean? For example, 
the skin or the nails in this area in this case can fall off and never grow again that is a problem of cold burns as well there is a picture for third degree and the last degree of cold burns is over here is basically frostbite when the skin and the tissues damaged by the cold completely through all of the layers it's gangrenose it's necrotized and unfortunately the last stage is amputation that's all what we can do in this case to save the person from the effects of products of microbiosis in this area okay that is about the cold burn about this electrotrauma and chemical burn electrotrauma or electric burn is the burn done by the electricity and the main difference between the electrotrauma and everything else like that one is the effect itself as you can see like the picture on the bottom the guy have burn on the face and on the arm but as well somewhere in between this kind of burns the burn in case of electrotrauma appearing when the person touching a positive and negative electrode and then by the effect of the electricity it's forming the electrical loop through his body in this case on the picture the face and the arm but the problem is that if you watch the videos in youtube about you about the people putting the electricity on the wooden stick on the wet wooden stick the electricity uh, draw a tree the growing from the electrodes the same effect appears in the body and the main thing they are causing it causing distant necrosis and in this case the most dangerous one is the appearance of necrosis in the armpit area where the main vessels and nerves that goes to the extremity localized so that is problematic case and it requires serious surgical attention chemical burn in this case has the same degrees as before first second third and fourth or if we're talking about ukraine or usa first second a second b and third causing by the chemical agents as i told before chemical acids alkalines and heavy metals these three agents can do the chemical burn first aid in this case for the chemical burn is to wash out the chemical element with water for at least 30 minutes if the first aid in case of heat trauma including applying of coolness of or cold water for 15 minutes for chemical burn it will take around 30 minutes to wash out and as well it's better to hospitalize the person to uh, or at least to visit the clinic to do the help in this kind of cases okay also i want to talk with you about the another way of classifying the burns is the amount of traumatized area because we already talked about the degrees about the, about the depth of the problem but now i want to talk with you about the area of the problem and how to determine the area of the problem the main thing that we can use in this case and the main, the most simple rule is the rule of palm rule of palm what does it mean one palm one hand is equal to one percent of the body surface it means that you can measure the amount of percents that the person had traumatized if you will apply the patient's hand on his body and you will measure the percentage of trauma another rule that you can use is the rule of nines this rule defies that the skin can be separated and changed in different areas and each of them will be equal to nine percent of the body for example head and neck head and neck equal to nine percent one hand and will equal to nine percent as well front surface of the trunk 
front surface of the trunk 18%, back surface of the trunk 18%, double nines, 9 plus 9. One leg 18%, another leg 18%, and the perineal area is 1%. If you count all nines, you will have 99%. 1%, the final one, is for the perineal zone, perineal area. And another one rule that we're using in hospitals is the Dolinin scheme. Dolinin scheme is the scheme that we're using to write the patient's cases. Uh, each piece of the body separated by the regions and you can take a pen and draw upon it. Mostly we're covering the areas oh, like in a schematic picture of the burn of the person and you using or different pencils or like in this picture different coloring to defy the degree. Like for example this person have right sh front shoulder burned with the first degree uh, left side of the abdomen with parambilical area with a second degree, left shoulder from the behind and the scapulary zone with, of the third degree, and back side of the left thigh is four degree burned. This classification we're using to determinizing the area of burn. Why do we need it? We need this to determinize the future treatment. We need to, to determinize the severity as well. And now let's talk about a bit about a treatment. The treatment of the person with the burns can be classified in four different stages of treatment. First stage, first stage is the pre-hospital stage is the stage when we're applying the help just a place of the accident. Second stage is the stage of hospitalization, the hospital treatment. Third stage is the stage about specific kind of treatment, specific hospital treatment. And fourth stage is the stage of high specialized treatment, high specialized case. Usually in this case we are including the combustiology departments and specific kind of surgeries for the people with a severe and huge burns. About the first aid, about the pre-hospital treatment. What I can tell to you about the pre-hospital treatment? Pre-hospital stage, basically, including that is the main rules about the pre-hospital stage. It's elimination of the influence of neutralization of damaging factor. Basically, remove the person from the fire. Secondly, anesthesia. About anesthesia. For anesthesia, you can use as sedatives as some really strong anesthesiology drugs, but not opioids and not semi-opioids, because they can they're supposed to be used only in a hospital environment and only under the control because in high dosages they can lead to what? They can lead to cancelling the breathing function. So anesthesia is supposed to be safe for the patient. Airway management, make sure that the person can breathe. Rehydration, firstly start with oral rehydration, give him some kind of fluid and then you can start the infusion therapy fluid therapy. Also check him about some kind of combined traumas or fra bone fractures or other bleedings or something like that and care about them as well. Monitoring of vital functions during the presence at the area of the accident. Discuss about the diff transportation and what is the closest hospital. It's better to transport him directly and fastly in the closest hospital within one hour after the accident. How to do proper rehydration at the first and second sta stages? For that we're using Parkland's formula. Parkland's formula is the formula defined the amount of fluid that you're supposed to prescribe to the person or give to the person in first 24 hours. 
how what is the formula itself you see four mils multiplied by the percents of the trauma and multiplied by the body weight by the kilo in the kilograms how to use this in field let's imagine that our patient has around 20 percent of the body covered with burns so we'll take four mils we multiply by 20 percent of the body surface and we multiply it on the weight of an average person like 20 percent let's think that it's something like uh, the front surface of the trunk and like some part of the arm and we multiply it on the average weight of a person 70 kilo for example in total that will give us 5600 milliliters of the infusion that we need to do to this person in first 24 hours and the first amount that we need to inject is the half of this amount in the first eight hours next half of this amount in next 16 hours that is the first rule for parkland's formula and the second rule for the Parkland's formula is that we cannot infuse more than 10 percent of the body weight so if the formula will give us more than seven liters seven liters that means that we need to infuse only seven liters if the percentage like that will be not 20 but 30 it will give us a lot more that means only seven liters we can infuse him in the first 24 hours that is how to count for the first day for the next days we will talk about it in a detailized lectures later in the next years okay what else i want to tell to you guys is about the index of the severity index of the severity this is the way how we can understand what kind of problem and what's see how serious the problem is to the person uh, if you saw that on these pictures that was mentioned that one percent for the first degree equal to one point one percent of the second a two points one percent of the third stage or one percent of the second b three points and one percent of the last stage is four points these points are points of index of the severity and we need to take the amount of the percents for example we will take the same calculations that we done before we will take our 20 percent of the body that was traumatized we will multiply them by the degree for example the person had like a second degree with the blisters second degree with the blisters so we will multiply them by two it will give us 40 already points and for example he didn't have any kind of uh, 40 points And for example he didn't have any kind of uh, respiratory tract burn or something like that and he is below 60 years in total we have 40 points as you can see it is moderate kind of severity but that will require hospitalization already uh, mild one is less than 30 points moderate from 30 to 60 severe from 60 to 90 extremely severe more than 90 points extremely severe is usually deadly cases how to understand does the patient supposed to be hospitalized or not let's talk about the hospitalization criteria about that uh, in which patient supposed to be hospitalized into the specific hospitals second degree burn with the blisters covering more than 20 percent of the body surface third degree burn covering the more than five percent of the body surface this ones any burns to the people that's over 60 years of age 
inhalation burns, that is the burns of the mouth and nose and the airways as well, it requires the medical attention and the control. Circumference burns of the body or limbs, that means the burns that are going around the extremity, around the finger or around the arm or around the body. During the process of inflammation and reaction on the burn, it will crush and squeeze the extremity and actually can cause the uh, blocking of blood supply and the person will have to amputate the arm in the res as resulting in this kind of accidents so that's supposed to be in the hospital and the burns to the palm the burns to the face the burns to the foot and the perineum is also for the hospitalization in the hospital the person will be treated in the hammock beds. It's a specific beds that have a net on instead of a matraids and the person when is lying on that uh, there is no pressure that's caused by his own body. So the matraids, the hammock bed doesn't press on the body, doesn't squeeze it under its own weight. Comfortable to treat the person on this kind of beds. What else I want to tell you guys? I want to tell you about the situations that we had uh, with the burns. Our body in general reacts not just by local changes on the skin or body surface, it also reacts in general with the mm, condition that we called burn disease. The burn disease is a combination of reactions of the body on the traumatic agent, on the burn itself, and it can has four different periods that we define. The first one, the burn shock for several hours, for two or three days, that lasts. That is the thing that we're taking care on the place, that we're taking in pre-hospital stage treatment, that we're taking, talking about the Parkland's formula as well. Everything is for the burn shock. Uh, I want to stop about that for a moment. I want you to understand it better. Uh, what is the burn shock itself? It's classifying, it's categorizing with the hypovolemia, uh, with the oligo and anuria, with low body temperature, uh, falling down of the blood pressure, and it because of the absence of because of the fluid goes outside the plasma, the liquid part of the blood goes outside in the blisters on, from the skin because of the burns. The person will have hemoconcentration and, uh, like I said before, hypovolemia. Uh, starts immediately after burn, lasts for a couple hours. Also, going with hypoxia caused by hypovolemia and the disturbance of hypo hemodynamic, disturbance of the lung functions as well, and disturbance of the functions of the kidneys because of the agents of microbiosis done by the burns. Toxemia stage, there we slightly go to toxemia stage, second one, from 3rd to 15 days after the burn. Severe intoxication. Severe intoxication because of what? Because of the toxins present in the body from the burn, from the burned tissues, from the dead tissues of the body, from the decreasing of the mechanisms of detoxification of the body, decretion of, of the function of the kidneys, liver, and everything that taking care about our detoxification. Third stage is septicotoxemia. It's characterized by the uh, appearance of the infection complications, so bacterial complications. And what does it mean? It means that the bacteria are involved in the process. And in this stage, we need to battle the bacterial complications as well. And then the last stage is reconvalescence or convalescence. It's after the restoration of the integrity of the skin, the scar formation and taking care about the rehabilitation as well. This is our stage of burn disease that you need to know as the students of the third year. Okay guys, generally 
that's all that I wanted to tell to you about the burns as an introduction into combustiology and I want you to know that that is experimental lecture so I will really appreciate your feedbacks your commentaries and if you need you can contact me so do not be hesitate to contact me if you have some kind of questions or recommendations about that thank you for your attention guys the materials mostly was provided by the Nipro Center of Thermal Trauma and I appreciate their effort and as a postscriptum message as a postscriptum message I want to show you this thing it's done by my friends they are doing the biomechanical hand they doing bionic hand the smart hand that will move according to the movements of the absent limb for the people who had an amputation of the extremity so for now they are looking for the sponsors and if you will be interested in it or if you know the people who are interested in it contact me i'll try to put their contacts down below so you can look for them okay guys that's all thank you for your attention take care Bye.